sina la kulala sina mahali ya kuenda nitafanyaje aji na tupiga atujamaliza ya kumaliza ya maji tena ndio huyu tractor nikuja kutupiga tunalelea rais kwa kweli kama anaweza kuongea na watu yake tupate makao na tujue tutaishi namna gani nilistuka sukari kapanda juu pressure juu na kapelekwa hospitali lakini bado sijasikia msuri na tunaambiwa tuhame hakuna pale ya kukwenda kwa maana wale iko kwa kambi ni wale malipo ni maji wote hakuna kitu Kenyans are requested to be careful and not to their nature because it is dangerous to do so we are going to be asking citizens to move away from many areas that pose a danger to their security Kenya, a land of vibrant savannas, majestic mountains and stunning coastlines, is in the precarious grip of a changing climate. The past few years have starkly illustrated these extremes, showcasing both devastating droughts and destructive floods. This documentary delves into the recent climatic challenges Kenya faces, the impact on its people and infrastructure, and the nation's resilient response. In 2022, Kenya faced a severe drought. Arid lands, failed crops, and desperate communities bore the brunt of meager rainfall. This recurring nightmare threatens Kenya's agricultural heartland, the foundation of its food security. In a cruel twist, 2023 brought El Nino, a weather phenomenon typically associated with increased rainfall. However, Instead of gentle showers, Kenya experienced erratic downpours and flash floods. While these rains provide some drought relief, they also caused widespread damage and displacement. 2024 began with heavy rains that morphed into devastating floods. Lush landscapes turned into ranging floodwaters, displacing families, destroying infrastructure, and leaving a trail of heartbreak. Once desperate for rain, the parched lands were left scarred, a harsh reminder of the unpredictable nature of a changing climate. The National Disaster Operations Center NDOC reported a staggering 230 deaths, affecting nearly 400,000 people and displacing over 194,000. The cold statistics can't capture the depth of the suffering. It's the survivors' stories that truly show the human cost. Those who clung to rooftops as their world became an ocean, and those who watched their homes vanish beneath the floods. In Maimayo, the river Ndarai transformed into a torrent, swelling homes and carving a path of destruction. The leaders who visited the victims expressed their condolences but stressed the urgency of the situation and asked them to move to safer grounds. Mashamba <laughs> Naona sasa eh, nimewaambia watu wa jeshi wakuje hapa mchana wa leo ndio tuweze 
kusaidiana na wao pamoja na vijana hawa watafute yale miili mingine ambayo haijapatikana we are going to be asking citizens to move away from many areas that pose a danger to their security The Madogo area, known for poor drainage, became an inland sea, displacing entire communities. The Kenya National Highway Authority, Kenya, closed roads, including the Garissa Madogo Road, due to ongoing rains. A tragic boat capsizing incident in Madogo underscored the severity of the situation. Hakuna njia. Hakama hakuna njia, kuna mambo mengi mekua, mekua affected. Biashara, security, na mambo muhimu. Not a communication. Kambu and Moranga counties witnessed a different horror. Saturated slopes gave way, triggering landslides that buried homes and claimed unsuspecting lives. Kuna simanzi asubuhi ya leo. Kwa maana kutoka leo asubuhi hata ukiangalia huko juu unapata miporomoko imekuwa mingi. Mvua imenyesha na sasa venye mvua imenyesha tumewapoteza wapendo wetu sita na bado kuna ng'ombe wenye wamewatua ha huko kwa mchanga bado hata penye sasa hivi unatuona tumesimama tuko juu ya ya, ya nyumba uh, ukiangalia mahali hapa janga kubwa limefanyika and looking uh, kuangalia tu hii matope peke yake ni shida kubwa kupita rescue response imeharibika kabisa manake uh, hii matope imekuwa mzito sana so kwa sasa hizi tumeweza kutoa mili sita uh, watoto wakiwa watatu na watu wazima wakiwa watatu Nairobi and Kisumu so floodwaters turned classrooms into murky lagoons and displacing residents. Wamesema venye tuko hapa kwa hii shule, shule lazima ifungulie next Monday. Eh Monday. So hawawezi kuja saa hii hapa kabla hatujajipanga venye tutaka. Hawezi kutusaidia kwa jinsi wataweza ndio tusizuia pia watoto kurudi shule. Siwezi nikasema nimejipangia watoto wangu chochote kozi vitabu zilienda na maji uniform zikaenda na maji mimi mwenyewe ni haso la tu sina chochote for now hakuna kitu hata moja tuliokoa sasa kitu si tunataka tu ni tusaidiwe tu mtoto kama huyu tunakanea hapa anapigwa na baridi kalala ndani ya mvua usiku msima siku mbili wakati nilistuka sukari kapanda tu pressure tu na kapelekwa hospitali lakini bado sitasikia msuri na mtoto wangu ni mgonjwa nimempeleka hosi kwa sababu alianguka kama anakimbia miko na watoto wako shule high school hata hawana venye wataenda hawana chochote mimi mwenyewe sina makao sijaokoa chochote na mimi ni mgonjwa kabisa The fury of nature wasn't confined to flimsy structures. Shocking videos showed multi-story buildings and mansions succumbing to flood waters. Hii nyumba ilikuwa ikijengwa vizuri, juu ile chuma ilikuwa inajenga, ilikuwa chuma konda sana. The Kenya Red Cross Society reported significant devastation where 43 counties were impacted, nearly 100,000 households were destroyed and over 50,000 were displaced. The floods claimed over 200 lives with 162 people still missing. Infrastructure damage included 67 destroyed roads, 129 affected schools and 42 compromised health facilities. Despite the devastation, Kenya's displayed remarkable resilience. Communities banded together, rescuing neighbors, sharing supplies and offering solace. The government and international aid organizations launched large-scale relief efforts providing temporary shelters, food supplies and medical teams. The government allocated 1 billion Kenyan shillings for the school reopening. We appeal to the people of Kenya as government intervenes to also take responsibility of their own safety. Kenyans are requested to be careful and not to dare nature because it is dangerous to do so the government under the leadership of president william ruto will do whatever it takes will apply all the required resources in terms of money and personnel
to make sure that lives are not lost and the people of Kenya are protected from this disaster. Adding to the woes of the recent flooding, a new wave of controversy has emerged. President Ruto's directive to demolish structures on riparian land within 30 meters of water bodies sparked outrage, particularly in Nairobi's slums. Mimi nilikuwa naishi hapa hapa chini ya mtoni nimeathiriwa watoto wako shule sina la kulala sina mahali ya kuenda tafanyaje maji inatupiga atujamaliza ya kumaliza ya maji tena ndio huyu tractor inakuja kutupiga tunalelea rais kwa kweli kama anaweza kuongea na watu yake tupate makao na tujue tutaishi namna gani many residents are aware of the illegality of their homes have found themselves displaced the government's aim to prevent future flooding clashed with accusations of uneven enforcement and extortion. Uh, there are also concerns about uh, unfairness and lack of transparency in the manner in which the 10,000 shillings is being distributed. So we are really asking the government, actually, do this in a humane manner. Follow the human rights principles in all that you are doing. This policy, intended to ensure safety, has become a source of fresh hardship for some of the most vulnerable Kenyans already reeling from the disaster. Kulingana na sheria za inchi yetu, ambayo inasema ya kwamba uwezi kujenga ama kufanya maendeleo yoyote, ama kulima mita thalathini kando ya mto. But many of us in this country have disregarded our planning laws. We have encroached on riparian reserves. And the floods today are becoming more vicious and more dangerous because of our inability to protect our riparian corridors. Amid these challenges, Kenya is committed to climate action. The country pledges to reduce greenhouse emissions and invest in climatic resilient practices, such as adopting drought resistant crops, improving water management, developing stronger infrastructure, and planting of trees. The intensity and duration of this year's deluge highlight the changing climate. Kenya's story is a microcosm of the nation's struggle on the climate front lines. It's a call for collective responsibility, innovative solutions, and a shift towards climate resilient future. The recent rains may offer a reprieve, but the battle against climate change is far from over. We have been calling on Kenyans to buy into the government um, call to plant trees across the country. It is, not, it is no longer a pastime to plant trees. It's life and death. And I'm sure Kenyans can see. When we say let us plant trees, it is the least we can do, but it will save our lives. Climate change poses a serious threat to Kenya's future. The coming months will test Kenya's resolve, relief efforts, and commitment to climate resilient development. By changing climate action policies and reducing carbon footprints, we can support Kenya's recovery and ensure a sustainable future for all. The deluge scars may take years to heal, but Kenya's spirit of resilience offers a glimmer of hope, not just for itself, but for other vulnerable nations facing the wrath of a changing climate. My name is Dereva Hilary.